Hello, hello, you bass nerds and fellow YouTubers out there. Hopefully you are having a wicked day. I can see your smiling face out there, smiling right back at me. Hopefully you're having a wicked day. Now that clip that you just saw was of the amazing Henry Clinder of the legendary band Dirty Loops. Now the clip that you saw at the beginning of this video was taken directly from the workshop that we filmed with Henrik when we flew him over to London for Scott's bass lessons. And what you're gonna see today is Henrik from that workshop talking specifically about how he built his technique on the bass and some specific exercises that his bass teachers gave him. It's really, really insightful. And remember that your technique on the bass is it's the foundation of everything, right? Without good technique, then we ain't gonna be playing cool lines. So I'm gonna hand over to Henrik and he's gonna teach you some badass bass stuff. Take it away. Like when it comes to technique, obviously you've got a burning technique. I've just been through in the control room watching you play and you've oh. absolutely been tearing <laughs> it up. Are there any specific technique exercises that you've used in the past to uh, you know, get your playing to where it is now? I, like the one one thing I did in the beginning was actually uh, to try to like uh, practice the left hand because that's where my my ra right hand is kind of bad but the left hand it is so, cool to me <laughs> yeah you just like pick every other note every here and there like to yeah 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 <laughs> but like with the left hand is to like uh, play without the thumb rests back here so yeah because then the fingers has to. So I did that, and then I also played with only these two fingers, like... So with the third, is that just with the third and fourth finger? Yeah, yeah. Uh, just because those are usually the problematic ones. So like major scales with just the third and yeah, the fourth? Yeah, I, I kind of like improvised with like playing with two, those two. And then there's another one that I got from my bass teacher, Robert Sundin, that I think he got from Gary Willis. That's uh, actually, it's like a fretboard exercise as well, but it's, um, if you, I'm, I will do this in C because it's the easiest to explain. So it's basically that you play like a C major arpeggio up and then yeah. go down with the scale and on the next beat you have a D minor arpeggio up, yeah. E minor, and then you go through. And then you can do that like all across the fretboard. So you can start from D and like, uh, so this is the Dorian mode. So. So then you kind of like, we, and then like if you do it on like a melodic minor, so you do the same thing like all across. So you learn yeah. kind of all the boxes of uh, of the bass. So you can yeah, do yeah, this yeah. on a four string as well, uh, because I kind of start on the E string all the time. Yeah, 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 me too, me too. <laughs> I know, yeah. So what he was doing there, guys, is just in case you missed it, he's taken a major scale and he's playing, let's say, like C major. So he's going up the C major arpeggio and then down the C major scale. Yeah, yeah? so you, to the you D. End, yeah, you end like on the major seven, then yeah. it's four notes down down the scale. And, so, then, and, then, and then it's the D minor, which is the next arpe arpeggio within the C major scale. So you take C, C yeah. major scale, you've got C major, D minor, E minor, F major, G. So the, and then you move yeah. up the fretboard. But a good thing, like, uh, I like this exercise because you can do a lot of things with it. Like, you can do it in, uh, I, I did it also, like, to practice shuffle phrasing, like. Yeah. And so on, like, yeah, it was a little sloppy, but. <laughs> um, and uh, you can also, like, uh, play it in triplets or quintuplets, or, like, if you play it in quintuplets, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four, five, one, two, three, four. So the pattern one, stays the same, but well, the yeah, accents change. Yeah. 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 So like, like, um, yeah, you can do it to do all sorts of stuff. With and it, that so. was just you were just doing like the diatonic major scale there, but you also yeah. before you did it in the melodic yeah, like you minor. Can do, yeah, and you can do it in harmonic major. Like. Yeah. Piano-esque, isn't it? Yeah. Like the exercise, yeah. Yeah, it sounds like almost like a hand-on. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So, but um, 
I think it's cool with like exercises. That's a book, by the way. <laughs> I don't want to mess it. Everybody's what Hannon? What? It's a book. It's a it's a piano exercise book, right? Uh, yeah. The Hannon. Yeah, like for the name. two hand. I don't know exactly what it does, but I think it's like scales in two hands or something like like uh, yeah. or pattern exercises and stuff. Yeah, like, that. like Yannick Guzdala mentioned it sort of like a million oh. years ago, and I think that's where I got it from. <laughs> and then I was like, oh yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but I like this thing uh, to do like sort of have a multifunction when you do an exercise because you can kind of do it like uh, yeah my teacher I would probably not be able to do that now if someone would put me up to the task but I had to play this like with a metronome set on 30 and then like uh, then I had to uh, the metronome would go on the four end in every two bars so but yeah yeah that was not right it was not the four end so like yeah uh, it was on the fours, a four. Yeah. Yeah, yeah so yeah, that's a yeah. four end, yeah. So what he's doing there is you're obviously working on your harmony and you're working on your fretboard knowledge and you're also working on your timing as well. Yeah, so, sure yeah, that, yeah. So it's like a little bit of everything, actually. Like, have you used a metronome in your practice time? Yeah, I, yeah, we, but I use the metronome just for that, actually. To Stuff use it like in, that. Uh, yeah, yeah, otherwise I you like to play with sequence or more, but... Uh, or to like find out like uh, rhythmic things like when with overlays to kind of hear how they even out so that it, that I can do it to a metronome. So yeah, it's I think it's a good thing. But yeah, with the timing thing, it's usually like playing to sequence or or to tunes. I really like that. I like yeah, just sort of like yeah, along. shredding on. <laughs> <laughs> when it comes to organizing your harmony on the fretboard. Yeah. Hopefully you enjoyed that, guys. Again, huge thanks to Henrik for flying over to London and doing that with us. Now remember. That is only a tiny part of like an hour long workshop with Henrik. If you want to check out the full thing, just go to scottsbasslessons.com and grab a 14 day free trial for our membership over there where you're going to see, you know, workshops from Henrik that you've seen today, Bobby Vega. We've got, we've got so many awesome tutors teaching at Scott's Bass Lessons. All you need to do is grab your 14 day free trial and take us for a test drive. See if it's for you. Now, without further ado, make sure obviously you subscribe to the channel so you get notified when I upload a video like this and as always take it easy I'll see you in the show